7.41. You're watching and listening to Breakfast with Stephen and Anne. Time to go through the papers now. And joining us this morning, <coughs> broadcaster Pete Price. And joining him, author and broadcaster Nikki Hodgson. So thank you very much for coming again. We're actually starting with Nikki. Mm. And it's the lead in The Telegraph, isn't it? It's the head. It, it's about universities' view of private schools. Yeah, so specifically it's about Oxbridge and... Um, this idea that Oxbridge is now discriminating against pupils from private schools. It's Melvin Roth, who's the chairman of the Headmasters and Headmistresses Conference, who's interviewed and kind of row about it and said that, yeah, he feels that they are being discriminated against and that there's a suspicion that school type is being used by universities as a quick and dirty proxy measure to make the system look fairer. Now, I went to a private school and I applied to Oxford and I didn't get in. And I think that was absolutely fine and totally fair because what the... Uh, some of the tutors are saying is that actually if you go to a state school you are disadvantaged you don't have the same level of uh, you don't have the same ratio of teachers to pupils you don't have the same extracurricular opportunities so if you are reaching a standard that maybe is the same grade but you know fewer points then you should be considered to have done better mm -hmm. i don't think there's anything wrong with this i think it's fuss over nothing at the end of the day you know people who go to private schools still end up in the top jobs i think what's yeah. happened at two-thirds of them are privately educated mm -hmm. hasn't done them any harm whether they've been to oxbridge or not so the benefits of going still outweigh than you know yes. negatives. So I just think it is fair actually that we have more state school pupils at Oxbridge. It's how it should be. Uh, I agree, Pete. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I went to a secondary modern school. I've done all right for myself, so yeah. I just, I get Listen, I've got to say, before we mention the next story, the feature on dogs is fantastic that you're doing oh, this morning. Yes. I had an experience in Panto with a great uh, St. Uh, Saint Bernard. Uh, hated me. And the look it used to give me was dreadful. And what they did was they did a magic trick. So I was playing Dame, so I had to go into this house with the St. Bernard, and then the house disappears, I disappear, and St. Bernard's there, and the kids go, Go, oh, look at that. Yeah. The St. Bernard hated me so much. It waited for every performance when we were in that house to pass wind. Oh. oh. So she right. hated that dog. <laughs> Well, they do, they do do things like that. Apparently, they judge you when they're staring at you. Oh, this one's not me. When they're staring at you, they are not just loving you. Yeah. They are judging you, and they will have more respect for you and more time for you if they think you're clever. But it was looking at me saying, you're a man in a frock. I'm not having this. Oh, well. <laughs> it probably was really weirded out by it, wasn't he? Um, Pete, can we have a look at the Express and... Um hounding OAPs over their licence fee. Yeah, the, the, uh, the licence fee, uh, it's a, a double-paid thing. Um, stop hounding these old-age pensioners. Give them a break. We're already... Uh, 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 struggling to uh, to keep pensioners alive. They've had the pandemic. They've had the problems with the post office, which we mentioned before, and banks that are closing. They don't have much going for them. An awful lot of them. An awful lot of people do. They look after themselves. But those who are housebound, please give them... Um, a licence over 75. It's not asking that much. They have paid an awful lot of them tax all their yes, life. I know the BBC programmes cost a fortune, which they do cost a fortune, and someone's got to pay for them. But please, let's show a little bit of heart to people over 75 and give them something. Plus... I would get mine free. You oh, would. yes. Never thought of that. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, me too. No, I, I mean, uh, there's so many people, you know... Is, is it not free for anyone anymore? It used to be free for us. It used to no, be free it's for the... It it's yeah, it's yeah. There's I nobody so. gets it free. Yeah, I think so. So 75, I think, is right. If I'm wrong. Yeah. Because you know, a lot of them won't last much longer. Television is often your friend, isn't say. it? Yeah, it is a friend. It's and it's the only thing. You have paid your taxes <laughs> for those BBC What's that, Stephen? Time for advertising on I the think, BBC. I think it's gone going that way. I don't know how they're going to resist it any longer. Mm. It's just, I think the arguments for abolishing the Yeah, but then you can't have both, can you? You can't have a licence fee and no, an No, but I think, I think they're going to yeah. get... I think they'll have to get I, it. I sort of resent paying my licence fee now because I don't really watch any BBC. Really listen to that's, no, that's a, a big lot of argument, people, that, isn't A lot it? of yeah. people say that, but yeah. what they do find is they're watching BBC-made programmes yeah. on, online or whatever, yeah. yeah. And we're paying for that, aren't we, as well? We, cause we're, yes, we're, you're you know, subscribed to that anyway. It, it is a minefield, isn't it? It's a minefield. I don't, yeah, it's a minefield. Mm -hmm. um, can I have a look at uh, a royal in I'm a Celebrity? Now, I'm not a fan of I'm a Celebrity or any 
of these sort of things. Right, Tyndall's going in, which I'm really surprised at. I'm surprised about it too. It's really funny because I went to school with Mike Tyndall. <laughs> I used to get the bus home and he was the big rugby guy at the back of the bus. Wow. He was a few years older than me, but I've never forgotten that. And then when I saw him married into the royal family, it was, you know, a bit, a bit of a gear shift. But yeah, this, this is Mike going in and he's just saying that um, he's worried about becoming hangry <laughs> and how he might act if he's only fed rice and beans. Uh, but it also, it also says that... Uh, they asked him if the Queen had given him permission, the late Queen, and he said, well, I don't mind you asking, but it's not something I need to tell you, is it? He was very cryptic about it. That's a good reply. Yeah. It's a great reply, actually, to a question, because it's polite, but just mm. saying, I'm not going to tell you. Yeah. Um, you sort of like to know that the Queen had approved it, or the King now. Well, well no, but he, he isn't a direct member of the Royal Family. No. And, and, um, and he's a sportsman, and yeah. sports yes. people like going on that programme because they see it as a challenge. And he's yeah. got to earn a living. I mean... Yeah, well, yes, he has. You know? not the, they're not on the thingy. He's not, he's not just taking taxpayers' money. He's a great you know, way of making the world. So leave him, I think great way of making a living to eating all those dreadful yes, things. Yes, be horrible. I'm really glad no one's ever asked me to go in it because <laughs> I couldn't, and I certainly couldn't jump out of a helicopter. Well, we had, we had, we were eating insects on the show the other day. Well, were you? I wasn't. I didn't have an exam vegetarian. But yes, the. Um, Isn't um, it nice? Well, the, it was um, not a cockroach. Um, oh, would that be a foul? Crickets. Cricket? Crickets. Oh, yeah, they eat crickets, yeah. Crickets. Well, and it was yeah. strips of this cricket meat. <laughs> and and, and yeah, apparently it was very nice. Well, I, well, I've been to China and I've seen streets where they, they eat anything. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's just that. scary. If it moves, they eat it. Yeah. No, Apparently, it, it is the way of the future. We're going yes, to be we'll have healthy. To eat. We won't eat insects that look like insects on the plate, or at least you don't have to. It'll be no, ground it's up protein. into a protein. Yes, won't exactly. it? I think you should you take Harry, Harry with him into the. Uh, let's find out well, about the book. I was going to say, maybe it's a better way of making a living than selling your memoirs. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but, but what's Harry getting? £38 million? Pounds? He's donating it, though, isn't he? Yeah. No, not donating. all of it. Oh, no, he's donating some of it. 1.6 million uh, is going to go to one, uh, one of his one of two his charities, of his charities. Um, but I don't know about the rest. They're hyping it to death. Oh, they really oh, it's going to be a dreary read. Yes, well, I will. hope so. I think it will. Can I just say, I feel really selfish because when people talk about having these vast amounts of money, earning these huge sums, oh, I'm giving half of it away. I, mean, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't. I mean, I'd look after the family. Oh, that's interesting. Well, I, I would give it all away. That's I think, it. I don't think lots of people would. I think it's... And they do it... It's a PR move, isn't it? Yeah. They do it so that people will think they're generous so they don't question the rest of their wealth accumulated. Yeah. Stephen, that's so interesting. The heating bills. Uh, we, we get the heating allowance coming up. I know two famous, famous people who I will not mention on here, and they say, we're keeping our... Uh, we've paid tax all our life. Why shouldn't we have our 250 quid? Well... It's a fair point, I think. But they'll, they'll, that'll they'll, start, they'll, that'll they'll, start Twitter going. They'll have paid a, Ooh, lot, it? They'll have paid a lot of tax. A yeah. lot of tax. A bit more tax so, than most. So why they? not? Um, can we finish up with some some crisps? Yeah. I, I love a crisp. They're, they're special crisps. They're going on sale in, in stores, including Harvey Nichols yeah. and Selfridges. Are they posh crisps? They're posh crisps and they're egg crisps. So fancy a fried egg crisp. But um, Sarah hang on, has hang done... on. A crisp that tastes of fried eggs. Yeah, yeah. Oh. But this, Sarah says... <laughs> The fried egg crisps have never taken off in Britain. I opened a bag and uh, it, the smell of sulphur came out. The crisps are greasy, salty, very eggy, drenched in concentrated egg flavour. And then she says, you could buy 24 large free eggs for the same price. I'd love to know where you buy 24 oh, eggs for 4 for $4.99. And I love the idea of these crisps. I'll I have a do. pack at any time. I would have a pack at any time. Of a fried egg. Well, it's like you can buy baked potato yeah. flavoured crisps. Well, that's crazy because oh. crisps are potatoes. <laughs> just yeah, eat but, a potato. <laughs> <laughs> but they really, they really taste of baked potato. I love the idea of fried eggs. If there was a Harvey Nicks now, I'd nip out and buy you a pack of crisps. Oh, oh, yes. I'm going to call you crisp then. Crisp, will do. Oh, I'd love to if, try that. If you're that. vegetarian, you still eat eggs. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm not vegan. I see. Just checking. Not vegan. Just checking. Yeah. Not, not one of them veganists. It's too bad. I don't know how you manage without a bit of milk. And oh, as soon as I came back, I've just been away to Israel. As soon as I came back, I was there like a shot looking for a steak. <laughs> <laughs> like a shot. Bet you were. Um, look, we're going to leave it there, you two.
Uh, but we'll catch up with you both a little bit later on. Thank you.